Okay, so we've met key terms before, like a linear sequence. And a linear sequence is one when you can have the same common difference between both. So an example of a linear sequence would be, say, 2, uh, 5, 8, 11. And you can see here that the common difference, or the CD, is plus 3 each time. And we've looked at that before. That's what we call a linear sequence. Another way we can phrase this is we can say the first difference is always the same. It's always going to be plus 3. But what happens if a sequence is not like this? Here I'm given the sequence 2, 5, 10, 17. So I'm going to look first of all at the common difference here. So the common difference between 2 and 5 is plus 3. Between 5 and 10 is plus 5. And between 10 and 17 is plus 7. So immediately I can say, well, this is not a linear sequence. Well, what type is it? The first difference between all of the two is not the same. Well, what about if we look at the second difference? What is the difference between 3 and 5? The answer is 2, or plus 2. What is the difference between 5 and 7? The answer is plus 2. So... This is what we refer to as a quadratic sequence. A quadratic sequence is when you have the same second difference. So what if I wanted to find the next sequence, or sorry, the next number in this sequence? Well, I know that the difference from seven to the next number has to be plus two. And seven plus two would give me nine. And if I add that on, it will mean that the next number, which is 17 plus 9, will be 26. We continue on and we'll do it again. The difference between 9 and the next number has to be, the second difference has to be plus 2. If we add on plus 2, that will give me 11. And if I just make this a little bit smaller, we'll see that the next number that comes up is going to be 26 plus 11, which will give me 37. Okay, I'm going to do another example here for you. So we've got 6, 1, 0, 3, 10. Now they're being very nice to us. They're saying find the second difference for each of the quadratic sequences. So they've already told you it's a quadratic. So let's see what the first difference is. Well, 6 to 5 is going to be minus 5. And from 1 to 0 is minus 1. And from 0 to 3 is plus 3. And from 3 to 10 is plus 7. So that's the difference in the first one. And obviously, we can see none of them are the same. They've told us it's a quadratic, which means that the second difference must be the same. So let's have a look at that. The difference between minus 5 and minus 1 is 4. The difference between minus 1 and 3 is 4. And the difference between 3 and 7 is 4. If I was asked to find the next number in this sequence, I'm going to say, well, it's going to be 4 here. So it would be 7 plus 4 will give me what? Which is plus 11. And that will mean that 10 plus 11 will give me my next number, which is 21. So that's how we find the next term in a quadratic sequence. You're constantly looking to get the same constant in the second difference. All right, so we've had linear, we've had quadratic. There is another pattern that emerges here as well. And this is called the exponential pattern. So we'll have a look at it. I've got the numbers 4, 8, 16, and 32. Now, patterns that involve doubling or tripling or quadrupling or anything like that are called exponential patterns. So let's have a look. What is the first difference here? Well, the first difference here is 4. The second difference here is 8. The third difference here is 16. And what you can see here is you can actually see that this is constantly doubling. Times 2, 
times 2. So obviously the next one will be times 2 and I'd be adding on 32 to this one here, which would give me my next term to be 64. So an exponential one is one that when it is tripling, doubling, quadrupling, if you can notice a multiplication in the second difference. So I have an example here. For each of the sequence, identify the type of sequence and find the next three terms. So we've learned three types of sequences. The first is linear, if the common difference is the same from the very start. The second one was a quadratic, and this is when the second difference is the same. And the third one is exponential, which involves doubling, tripling, quadrupling, anywhere you can see at times. Okay, so we're going to look at these sequences and decide which ones they are. So the first one is 5, 11, 17, and 23. And the difference between the first one is going to be 6. Between 11 and 17 is going to be 6. And between 17 and 23 is going to be 6. So this is actually a linear sequence because the common difference between each of them is the same. So then it says to find the next three terms. So we're going to add on 6. That will give me 29. Add on the next 6. That will give me 35. And the last number in that sequence, we're going to add on another 6. And it will be 41. So that was part 1 there. We had to look and see which one of the sequences was it and to apply the rule to continue on to find the next three terms. Let's have a look at the second one, so number two, and it is 9, 27, 81 and 243. So again let's look at the first difference and the difference between 27 and 9 is 18, so it goes up by 18. Then the difference between 27 and 81 is 54. And the next one is the difference between 81 and 243 is 162, so plus 162. And I guess what we're asking now is, well, which type is it? Um, can we see that the second difference is going to be the same? Well, the second difference between 18 and 54 is not going to be the same as 54 and 62. I think we can all rule out straight away it's not a linear because the common difference isn't the same. So I'm gearing more towards the exponential, which is the times one. So let's see if this works. 18 times what will give you 54? I think if you multiply 18 by 3, you will get 54. And let's check and see if you multiply 54 by 3, what will you get? And you do in fact get 162. So we figured out that this is indeed an exponential pattern and we now need to find the next one. So obviously it will be 162 multiplied by three. I'll do that on my calculator. It gives me 488. So plus will give me 486. And so I know now that the difference between 243 and the next number will be the difference of 486. Okay, and I can add 486 plus 243, and I will get 729. And that tells me that that is the next number in the sequence. Now, I know that the difference between 486 and the second difference here has to be times 3. So 486 times 3 gives me 1,458. So the difference between this one is 1,458. If I just make this a little bit smaller, we'll see that we know that the difference between 729 and the next term is 1,458. So it'll be 729 plus 1,458 on my calculator. And that will give me the next term, which is 21. Eight, seven. Again, I have only found, so far, I've just found the next two terms in the sequence, but the question asks me to find the next three terms. So I know the difference between 1, 4, 5, 8, and the next number will be times 3. So 
So I go 1458 on my calculator, multiply by 3, gives me 4374. I then multiply, sorry, I don't multiply, I know that the difference between 2187 and the next number is 4374. And that will help me find the last number in the sequence, or the, as far in the sequence as I need to go to, which is 6,561. And they are the next three terms in that sequence. And you can see with an exponential sequence, they get big really quickly. We started off at nine, and suddenly within one, two, three, four, five, six, within seven terms, we're up on 6,000. And the exponential gets big really quickly or gets small really quickly. So another way to kind of spot an exponential pattern. All right, so your learning check for this evening then. Identify the following sequences, or sorry, if the following sequences are number one, quadratic, or number two, exponential and give the next three terms in the sequence. Show your workings. And by show your workings, I mean show how you've added on the common difference, found the second difference, all of that. And I'll see everybody tomorrow.